Wish me luck. So we're fitting ITBs to Project Siesta and we are keeping the ECU 100% standard. Now what does that really mean? I think we need to clarify it. So we've got three rules. Number one, no computers. Not near it, not on it, definitely not plugged in, no computers. Number two, no cutting of wires, no different sensors, everything is stock. Number three, at any point, I can just undo what I've done, reassemble with the standard bits, turn the key and drive it as a standard car. So last time out, we got the ITBs pretty much where we want them in the engine bay. So how much is left to do? Well, top of my head, we've got long studs for the head, crankcase breather, we've got to strip the ITBs of the bits we don't want, uh, idle valve plumbing, throttle position sensor, the pesky combined map and intake air temperature sensor couplers to even connect them together and throttle cable yeah we don't want to miss that one there's loads to do right let's crack on so there's a few jobs that can be done straight away first one is to dig into my little scrapyard I have in the corner <laughs> of the garage where I have the big brother of the Fiesta engine, the 1.7 version, and that has a metal inlet manifold, which means it's got a plastic crankcase breather. Perfect. That's one job, tick straight off the list. Next job is to strip down the individual throttle bodies. So we're gonna get rid of this secondary butterfly. God knows why it's there. And of course, all the fasteners are being an absolute bastard, but it's fine. I've got a drill and a chisel that makes a light work of that. So we need to get rid of the injectors as well because they just get in the way and we're not going to use them. We're going to use the ones that are on the engine. And finally, we pull off the TPS, the throttle position sensor, because we're going to use the one that comes standard with the Fiesta. And finally, making longer studs. That was easy. Now it's time to tackle something slightly trickier. This pesky combined intake air temperature sensor and manifold absolute pressure sensor. Now, why is it tricky that they're combined into one unit? Let's explain. So this is the standard setup. So you've got your engine and your throttle butterfly in between, you've got the intake manifold with a plenum volume. And that plenum volume smooths all of the intake pulses out from each of the cylinders and gives each cylinder an equal share of the fresh air coming in. And it's a great place to put your combined sensor because you've got this volume smoothing out the pressure reading and you've got fresh air coming in. So it's a great position for the combined sensor. However, in individual throttle bodies, we don't have a large volume like that that's exposed to engine vacuum. We've, oh, we've got four small ones that are right up close to the engine. Now, whilst that's okay for intake air temperature because the air is flowing straight over the sensor, it's very, very bad for the manifold air pressure because it's going to be dominated by the cylinder that it's in. So the solution, and this is something that a lot of the guys said on the comments, so thank you very much for out there, for you to you guys out there for this. We have a small plenum volume over here. Now this is purely just to give a bit of damping to each of the pressure signals that's coming from each of the runners via small vacuum hose, and it gives the sensor a nice smooth map reading. However, that's rubbish for intake air temperature because there's no air moving through it. So the solution isn't to have one sensor that does two jobs, it's to have two sensors and make them each do one job. So you have one sensor here, then you have another sensor over here where 
it's actually in the right place for the intake air temperature sensor. And then you simply deep in the connector and go directly into the sensors with your wires. At least that's the plan. So let's get some 3D modeling on the go and make all this happen. So first job is the boss in the intake runner for the intake air temperature sensor. So it's a fairly trivial job just to throw a new sketch plane up against the runner and sketch in the key points and then extrude yourself as something that will work. However, the key dimension is to make sure the right amount of the sensor protruding into the airflow because you don't want too much in there so it gets in the way of the air, but at the same time, you want just the right amount so it gets a good signal. That'll do the job. So whilst we've got the model open, it'd be rude not to put the vacuum takeoff for the brake servo into it. Again, a very simple modeling task and it's only coming off the one runner, so we don't need to worry about any plenums for that. Another job done. And finishing off the inlet manifold, we've just got to put some clearance in for the head studs so we can get a socket on the end of it or put a nut, nut on the end nice and easy and then finally because we've only got a little end of three i've got to split this so i can get it onto the build plate in two pieces so i put a plane down in an area that seems to make sense split the model into two pieces and there you have it so the last step in sorting out this pesky sensor issue is the map plenum and at its simplest this could just be a box with a connection for the sensor and for vacuum tubes but because 3D printer, I'm going to make it more complicated. So I've stuck some internal veins, which will help strengthen the box, but also help keep the um, airflow from interacting with each other. Is it needed? Don't know. Could I do it? Yeah, so I've done it. Whatever. So, so stick a lid on it with two more connections, one for the fuel pressure regulator and another one for something which I haven't worked out what it is yet. And we are done. So we're using my modified Ender 3 Pro for this, and there's some of the normal mods, but I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'll probably do a video when I'm happy with it. But what you do need for the carbon fiber nylon we're going to use is an all metal hot end. So I've got the V6 all metal from E3D on it, and you can see it's made a lovely job of this print. Build plate adhesion isn't a problem, as you can see, and to be fair, the print just looks lovely. It's nice and silky smooth. There's no artifacts or blobbing or stringing. And you can see the inlet track looks very, very nice. Yep, happy with that. I mean, the E-Sun um, EPA carbon fiber, the, the nylon carbon fiber, I'll put a link to it but it, it in the description. But it, it's lovely. It's nice and stiff. There's still a little bit of flexibility to it. That you get with nylon but it's got a lovely kind of light sheen it really does look like a cracking piece of kit so we've got two more jobs left to do with this we've got to put the threaded inserts into here and also because i'm an idiot i didn't size the holes correctly so we need to drill them out because i want to put compression limiters in there so once we've done the inserts we'll take a trip to the lathe and turn those down so these are the brass inserts i'm using you can see the nulls going opposite directions which really holds them in the part and there's also a little plain section that you can poke into the hole that's right sized and it just holds them in position gets them nice and square for you to melt them in with your trusty soldering iron once you've done that and got them as square as you possibly can you can trim the excess with a sharp knife but don't do it like this i'm a trained idiot and exceptionally lucky you guys might not be and in which case you'll find out how it feels to have a knife embedded in your thumb now it's time for a little trial fit and all looks good but I can't get my screw in and that's because I've been a bit of an idiot and not put the insert in straight so if this happens to you just fire up the soldering iron again and heat it up and just cant it over to a precise angle and then all is well you can kind of revisit it if you need to. So if you're an idiot like me, you're in luck. You can't really go wrong. And there you have it. All in, looks beautiful, like it's supposed to be there, and just the right amount of stick out into the airflow. So we don't restrict it, but we also get good signal on the sensor. I'm calling that a good job.
So in order to be able to put some proper torque on the fasteners, you need to have compression limiters in there. So these are metal spacers that go over the fasteners that allow you to tighten up the bolts without crushing the plastic. Now I've got some bar on hand as well as a lathe, so I'm gonna make my own, but you can probably do something with a tube if you can find the right size. But I needed to drill a nine mil hole down the middle of this bar stock. So that's what I did. And there's a lot of drilling involved and it takes even longer if your drill bit's not sharp. If only someone had done a video on a 3D printed drill sharpener, then I'd end up with a better grind on it than this. I'm only cutting on one flute, but it doesn't matter. We press on anyway. And once we've done the hole all the way through, we can part it off and voila we've got our spacer so all we've got to do now is repeat this a few more times so one two three four more spacers and we've got a full set lovely now i don't have a knurling tool and much like the brass inserts these are going to need something to bite into the plastic so I break out the universal tool and devise a little hatch shape on their grinders. Is there nothing they can't do? Now, I'm not proud of this bit. Because I'm an idiot. I wanted compression limiters, I've just made them, but I didn't size the holes correctly. So that means I've got to drill them out. Now this is bad because of lots of reasons. But one of the more interesting ones is that there are tiny strands of carbon fiber in the nylon. And if you drill it or do any other post-processing, it will release these strands that will do a similar job to asbestos if they get in your lungs. So if you are going to be an idiot and get it wrong, then please wear a respirator while you fix it. Or don't. I mean, I'm not your mum, but just don't come coughing to me saying, <laughs> no one told me about the carcinogenic carbon fibre. <laughs> Thank you for that. Now we've got our holes, let's fit our compression limiter. So we need the one, two, three, four, and five of them. And the way we're going to do that is in pretty much the same way as the small brass insert with a soldering iron. This little man, well, it's just not doing the job. So it's time to bring out the big gun. Now, I've never used this soldering iron for any job ever before. Until this one. So it's nice to know it does have a use. So looking at the throttle position sensor, this is the setup from the Fiesta. We've got a fairly small throttle body. It's about the same size as one of these ones but hey, that's what we're that's what we're after a bit more airflow um, and you've got the uh, throttle position sensor here on the end so normally these get five volts from the ecu and they feed back a voltage that's proportional to the position of the throttle butterfly now there is one already on the individual throttle bodies and um but you can see the electrics different so that causes a lot of problems so we're just going to take this one off here and put it on there now we need to make an adapter so that's fairly simple but before we break it all down we need to be just aware that they may be set up a specific way so you can see here uh, there's a, um, a slotted hole and that allows you to fine tune the voltage going back to the ecu for any particular throttle uh, position so it might be that the bike needed a specific voltage for closed throttle so if that's the case you close the throttle and just tweak that until it gave you the right voltage however on the Fiesta, there are no such uh, slotted holes. There's just, it's just bolted straight up. So that leads me to believe that it's not looking for an absolute value um, or an absolute position of the throttle. It's more just looking at, is it opening or is it closing? Do, does there need for acceleration enrichment, whatever. And all the load um, on the engine is coming from the absolute manifold absolute pressure sensor so that makes things a little easier but i'm not going to take any risks what we're going to do is measure the voltage on all the pins with it closed and then on the adapter we'll make it so that we're able to to um, tweak it and adjust it so it's exactly the same on this setup as it is on this one that should minimize any problems all it took then was a spot of measuring a dash of modeling and a slice of printing and there you have it a working adapter first time through as well 
I'm using the exact same O-ring gaskets that came with the standard inlet manifold, so they should do the job. Oh, and the thing in my left hand, yes, that's the map plenum. I've printed it. And so it's time now to get my hands dirty and put the whole thing together. Now, there was a few little things that needed to be overcome, but generally everything went onto the car as you'd expect. And the crankcase breather went on very nicely, so do the inlet manifolds. And I had to steal a small amount of the vacuum hosing from the Mini because I just ran out. Most frustrating. So I've cut these couplers from the correct size silicon hoses. If you click here, you'll see a video of this and how to get them nice and square and pretty. So that's it. They're on, clamped up, a few finishing touches now. So here we have some bungs for the injector holes because we don't need those injectors anymore that came with the throttle bodies. We're gonna use the ones that are direct in the head. Finally, we get to the wiring. So the throttle position sensor, I have to stretch to the other side. So I've made up these little patch leads with a small spade connector on one end and I've just lightly tinned the other end so I can just push it into the electrical connector. And a similar trick is being pulled with the intake air temperature sensor and the map sensor. Unfortunately, I tried deepening the connectors, but they just didn't want to go. And I did not want to risk smashing the electrics to bits and having to source an electrical connector. So I'm just using some extension wires for the time being because they'll do the job. So everything's connected. Um, we've got the sensors all in and we've double checked them. The wiring is obviously janky as all frig but it's only temporary, we've got everything hooked up, we've got it generally tidy out of the way, something's gonna snag. Big thing left to do is currently still the breather, <laughs> but who can be bothered to wait for that? Let's try starting it. Wish me luck. I know, I know you want to see the car drive and you want to hear some of those sweet, sweet brap, brap, brap noises out in the wild. Well, not today, because this video is already long enough and it's took three months to get to this stage. So better get this out there and you guys can keep the eyes peeled for the next video when it comes out, which will be soon because we have a bit of a deadline with this car that I'll explain on the next video, but it means we've got to get a bit of a wriggle on. So, if you're still watching now, and I hope you are, then please hit the thumbs up to let the algorithm know that this video is worthwhile showing to some other people. And if you wanna support the channel some more, then please consider joining these fine people and head over to the Patreon. In the meantime, and until the next time, be good. And if you can't be good, don't get caught. Brap, brap. Brap, brap, brap.